Well, here to discuss all of that and more is Russell Myers, Royal Editor of the Daily Mirror in London. Uh, Russell, thanks so much for your time. Now that we've had a chance to see Harry's um, interviews, you know, what are your main takeaways? Well, good evening, Gary. Well, where do, we, where do we start? I mean, we've had days and days of these <laughs> allegations coming out, not only from uh, from his book, uh, Spare, but obviously the, the interviews that have followed within it as well. And nobody comes off well, least of all Harry. Uh, but of course, he's, the, the allegations of sort of a violence from, from William, abandonment by his father, calling Camilla wicked stepmother, uh, saying that she was the dangerous villain. I mean, the list is absolutely endless. And I think uh, the, the main takeaway is it will be in a, a very, very long road back for Harry now. Now, I don't think there's a, there's, a, there's a road back for him myself, but anyway, we'll see. Time will tell. Uh, the main part of the interview that seems to be making headlines is this. Have a listen to this. There comes a point where, you know, again, going back to the relationship between um, certain members of the family and the tabloid press, those certain members have decided to get into bed with the devil, right? Mm. Uh, to, rehabilitate, to, to rehabilitate their image. Yeah. If you need to do that or you want to do that or you choose to do that, well, that is a choice. Uh, I mean, Russell, he wants a quiet life. He wants the media out of his life, but he's holding another media conference a bit later on in the day. Uh, you know, I mean, what did you make of all of this, what he's saying? Well, it's interesting. I think for so many levels, Harry is absolutely obsessed with, with certain uh, issues in his life, be it with, with the media, be it his family's relationship with certain sections of the media, or indeed, uh, you know, the day-to-day -day life of, of, of palace officials. I mean, he doesn't really understand how the media works. And I think that that is something that he just gets so confused within it and repeats the rhetoric that uh, just is spinning around in his head. And he just seems a, an awfully confused individual. And on one sense, I think that a lot of people will feel a sense of sadness for him because, you know, his mother's death has obviously weighed heavily on his, uh, on his mind over the last 27 years. And it's something that he can't get out of. But uh, this constant rhetoric of him being the victim, I think, is, uh, it, it won't do him any favours uh, in, in the public's eye. Well, I mean, I, I, I don't think anybody in public life is there to keep the media amused. So, you know, I, I can understand uh, his reluctance, but he has a role to play. Um, this kind of victimhood mentality is, I think, really at the heart of what I think shocked a lot of people in Britain, where uh, the royal family are not victims. They're there to do duty. It's that sense of duty, that sense of giving back to the community, of giving some, some stability. And this bloke looks, well, frankly, unstable. The issue is, uh, I think the, 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 the palace and indeed the royal family have, have chosen not to engage in a, a war of words with Harry. And I, and I can't see that changing at all, because uh, the, the, the more allegations that have come out, the more watered down Harry's argument has been. But I think what will hurt him and it will stay with uh, him across this, this interview and this book is the admission of killing 25 Taliban insurgents. We had the British uh, generals coming out this week, uh, former heads of the armed forces, saying that he's he's actually trashed the only family he had left. He's he's, he's moved on from trashing, trashing his own family to uh, really putting his comrades in danger, and and that will hurt and weigh very very heavily when uh, when the dust has settled on this interview.